Okay, today we're working with Blender 2.78a, and this is part of a series, so be sure to check out the playlist in the description of this video. And I do thank you for watching. Let's go ahead and dive in to some video editing in Blender. Uh, hopefully you watched the previous videos in this series. I'm going to go up here and go to video editing. I'm going to say add. I'm going to say add a movie. And I'm going to go to where my movies are and say thumbnails. And I'm going to choose this one of my daughter running. Unclick sound and say add frame. I'm also going to just shorten up our video clip here, you know, our project to 100 frames. And if I hit Alt A, and I can use my uh, mouse wheel to scroll in here, uh, I'm caching the current video. You see it's playing at 17 frames a second, then once it's cached, it starts playing at the full 30 frames a second there. And off to the right, with that video clip selected, so make sure you right click that video. You have a bunch of options. We've looked at a few of these so far, but we're going to go down here to filters, or filter. And you have a few effects. Uh, so, and we're going to look at a few of them. There's one or two I'm going to skip over. But uh, you can flip the video. And whenever I make one of these changes, it's got to recache the video. And I'm going to hit X here. And you can see we flipped it on the X axis. So instead of running from, from left to right, she's running from right to left. Uh, y would flip it so she's upside down. Uh, X is still flipped, so she's still running from the other side of the screen. I can uncheck X, and she'll run upside down from the other side of the screen. So very straightforward flipping on the X and Y axes. Backwards will reverse the video and it does take a little while for it to cache videos but once it caches it it will play it uh, smoothly uh, but then we'll have a video in reverse. Let's go ahead and let it finish caching there right about here there we go so now we have a video in reverse. Great. So you might ask, what's the uh, strobe effect? Well, strobe effect is, oh, and also if you hover over most of these, it will tell you this one reverses the frame order and even shows you the Python script that's used to issue that command. So you can write your own scripts to automate stuff or create your own effects by combining these, which Blender does with everything, which is one of the great things about it. Um, but a strobe will only display every frame. So our frames 30 frames a second, or our video is 30 frames a second. Uh, so I can set this to play only every 15th frame or every second frame. Uh, and that's not, that's different than changing the frame rate of the video, which would, if I slowed down the frame rate, it would play slower. If I sped it up, it would play faster. Uh, if I say, let's say every 15th frame, it's only going to play two frames a second. But it's playing it, as you can see, just like kind of a jerky boom, boom, boom. Uh, and this is an effect that's probably not used too often. I'll do five frames in a second. Uh, but, you know, uh, this could be combined with other effects for, like, if you're doing a flashback sequence or someone's, like, was hitting the head and everything's looking kind of jerky or, or some sort of psychedelic drug thing. This could be one effect that you can add. Um, also, you know, if you're trying to get an old-time, timey feel, like a black-and-white film movie, you know, setting the strobe, you know, to, to uh, you know to something like two or three, which is just a little off, so it's playing every other frame, every third frame, gives it kind of a jerky feeling, uh, which you might might add to that. Uh, that's probably where I use it the most, is if I'm trying to get that old film effect, black and white, grainy, silent film type effect. Um, so that's those things. And then now we can come down here to colors. And uh, there's other color effects you can do, but by default, built into the filters here for every video, you have saturation, uh, which is, you know, how uh, saturated, how much color is in the colors. So if we were to turn it up, you can see the colors are very, very bright. And if you turn it all the way down to zero, you're going to get yourself a black and white or actually a grayscale video. So, yeah, you have your grayscale video there. And again, every time I change one of these effects, it's got to recache the video. Uh, and that would be faster if we use proxy videos, which we'll be getting, again, into in a future video. I kind of just want to dive into the video editing before I get into the proxy, even though it'd probably be good if I did proxy videos first, because if, if your videos are playing jerky on your computer and you're having trouble editing proxy videos, proxy is what you really want to get into. Um, so that's saturation. We'll set that back to one, which is the normal colors. Now multiply, multiply is, um, I don't know, it doesn't really give you a description when you hover over it. Multiply, if you're familiar with threshold, it's kind of like threshold with the colors. So if I go way down, it actually makes it uh, uh, more transparent. But if I, as, I, as I go up, you can see it becomes washed out or overexposed, I guess you could say. So let me set to, yeah, it's like 1.5. So like one's the default. So you can see it's, it's kind of washed out or overexposed. Let me set it to two. And you'll see 
here in a second. Because I didn't recognize, I hit two, enter, there we go. And so if you just got like an overexposed, that's a quick way to kind of do that. Uh, but that's it for this little filters box. Uh, I didn't get into the interlacing. Um, I really don't think that's important if you're working with digital video. Uh, I really don't know what this button does. I mean, we can look. Uh, but interlacing has to do uh, when you're working with analog video, especially when you convert it to, to digital. Um, does this actually, does, do we actually see a difference in the video here? Not that I really notice. Anyway, so I, I wouldn't really worry about that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, interlacing does have to do with Analog video, uh, you know, basically takes different scan lines, and then when you're converting to digital, uh, you can it can cause problems. I haven't I, back in the day that used to be a big headache, and I don't know if this button helps uh, fix that. But since I work all with digital video now, it's not really an issue anymore, and so I, I really don't know what that button does, and I also don't know what convert float does. I mean, a float uh, is a is a decimal. So uh, value, so it says convert input to uh, float data. If anyone knows, I, I mean, I could look it up, but I don't think it's something you're probably gonna be using often, so I'm not gonna bother talking about it in this video, but if you do need it, I'm sorry for not mentioning it or describing it. I do thank you for watching. As always, uh, this video is part of a series. Be sure to check out the playlist. There should be a link at the end of this video or in the description of the video. Uh, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description of the video as well as a link to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash malx1000. I appreciate any support you can give me. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.